Hey folks, I'm Alex Dowd. Hi, I'm Katie Reif. We are talking today about a favorite of the Cannes Film Festival, uh, Celine Sciamma's new movie, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Welcome to Film Club. So there's this moment in Lady Bird from a few years ago, Greta Gerwig's film, that's always stuck with me. And it, it's a scene where Lady Bird is uh, sitting down with this head nun played by Lois Smith. Mm -hmm. And Lois Smith is talking about how she thinks that there's not a lot of difference between attention and love, is what she says. Okay. That when you pay attention to something, that is an expression of love. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that a lot while watching uh, Celine Sciamma's new movie, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Yes. I think it's absolutely a film about that conflates the process of studying something mm -hmm. and studying someone and falling in love with them. Yes, absolutely. Okay. This film definitely, my, my main thought after I watched it was that it makes just looking intently at someone's face and memorizing their features seem like the most romantic thing yeah. possible. Yeah, like the sexiest thing. It, yes, you know? it's very sexy yeah. also, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that happens within the context of a story that's set in, I believe it's 18th century France. Mm -hmm. So we open with a young painter. She's a woman painter, which is very unusual for her time. And she's played by Nomi Merlant. Her name is uh, Marianne. And she's been hired to go to this remote it Sounds like a private manor. island. Yeah, it's like a private island, like yeah. sort of a manor house for this aristocratic family. And they've got a daughter whose name is Heloise, who's played by Adele Anel, I believe is how you say her name. <laughs> so she's playing like the rebellious daughter of this aristocratic family who really just does not want to get married at all. And the, being the time that they're in, part of the courting process is sending a portrait of the intended to her potential fiance to see basically if he likes her, if she right. thinks she's attractive. Right. And it's Heloise, almost like a receipt or uh, something. Kind of, yeah. You know, or, or like a receipt of intentions. You or, know? or like sending somebody a selfie off of <laughs> Tinder nowadays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the mm -hmm. slow motion version of that. <laughs> and she just refuses to sit for the portrait. She's just a nightmare to every painter who has ever come in to do the portrait because she knows full well that when this portrait is done, she has to go get married and she really doesn't. Yep. I don't want to do that. So Marianne is the newest painter to come, and uh, Heloise's mother tells Marianne, just hang out with her. Don't mm -hmm. let her know that you're painting her and paint at night in secret. Yeah. And that's when the observation begins. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a great romantic setup, mm -hmm. um, partially because of what we talked about, yeah. um, that, that it's all about observation and about studying somebody. And uh, I mean, you know, when you Just meet somebody, that's what it's about. Them. Yeah, you're spending time with somebody and you're learning things about them. Mm -hmm. And I think it functions as this, kind, this sort of beautiful slow burn. We're very slowly seeing these two move close together. Another thing I appreciate about it, though, is that there is there's a bit of like a moral dimension to, to this dilemma that our main character has. Oh, sure. Because she understands that the job is basically to get this this portrait, but she also knows that if she finishes this portrait and uh, once the job is done, she is basically hastening um, Heloise's entrance into into marriage. into a marriage and a world in a life she doesn't want and becoming like a piece of chattel being exchanged like yep. goods, you know and. Once they fall in love with each other, which is what happens when they spend all this time together, it, it becomes even more of a dilemma because, mm -hmm. you know, she can't finish the portrait or else it's over. Right. That's exactly. it. Exactly. There's a personal leave. stake at that point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm fascinated by, uh, I think that there is, uh, there's kind of a, a feminist dimension to this film mm -hmm. as well. Um, and, and it goes beyond simply um, the plot being about... A lesbian romance? A lesbian romance okay. and also about whether or not somebody is going to be pushed into a marriage they don't want. Well, it's a very small cast and yeah. it's almost entirely female. Right. Well, mm -hmm. and I would say, I mean, uh, not even, not definitely not incidentally. I mean, even no, when not you at meet... All the character who uh, Heloise is potentially no. going to be betrothed to. We don't even see his face. You could even extrapolate like Sappho came from the island of Lesbos. Right, you know, right. they're on their they're on their women's yep. utopia island yep. together. Yep. Um, and my one thing with this film does take a while to get going. It does. You get into the rhythm of their everyday life, mm -hmm. which is a lot slower than we're used to now. Mm -hmm. But I think that that actually ends up making it more powerful once it does kind of explode into a passionate relationship, mm -hmm. because you feel like you're getting to know them as they're getting to know each other. Totally. I mean, it's a seduction as well. Mm -hmm. The movie is taking its time in the way that, that somebody might take their time during the seduction process, mm -hmm. you know, they're very slowly moving together until uh, until the moment when they finally meet. 
the tension at that point, the romantic tension and mm -hmm. the sexual tension between them is at this fever pitch, mm -hmm. you know? And that only works, I think, if the movie is very gradually building to that. Yeah, I really love the scene where they kind of let each other know that they're into each other. And it it's like we've been talking about, they say to each other like, well, you bite your lip when you're nervous, you blink a lot when you're excited, just little tiny things that they've noticed about each other. Totally. It's just, it's very romantic. And also to bring it to the feminist dimension you were talking about, you know, everyone talks about the male gaze and the female gaze. And I think that this movie is a great example of the female gaze, um, not only because it was made by a woman who is herself uh, the director, you know, Celine is, Siama, yep. yeah, she's a, a member of the lesbian community also, mm -hmm. and actually dated the main actress for a long time. So might have been an interesting set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. They, they have a history, the two of them, yeah. um, and, and I mean that adds a sort of subtextual level too. It does. I mean, not not entirely on a gossipy level, also on a romantic level, mm -hmm. you know. The the amount of. Um, care and affection that the mm -hmm. movie lavishes on Heloise yes. uh, comes not just from the character, but from the camera. Right, um, from the camera from the as well. the way she's framed, the way she's lit. Yeah. Um, the movie, I think, is, a, is in love with her as a performer. I, yes, and in love with her is a very important distinction from lusts after her totally. or, you know, is objectifying her. Yeah. Because that's the main critique of when you talk about the male gaze in film is that it portrays women as objects. Yeah. But this is very much a, she's a subject, you know, subject of the portrait, subject of the movie, just everything yeah. she's, it's all in love with her, like on on a personality level as well as a physical level, which I think is what really speaks to that aspect of the gaze of the film. All right, folks, thanks for joining us today. Please be sure to like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll be back next week with another episode of Film Club. Thanks. Mm -hmm.